This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil prices edged higher on Thursday after dipping in early Asian trade, as concerns about global supply tightness outweighed a build in US gasoline and distillate inventories. Brent crude futures for September, the more actively traded contract, rose 63 cents, or 0.6%, to $113.08 a barrel at 0250 GMT. The less liquidly traded August contract, which expires Thursday, was at $116.08, down 18 cents, or 0.2%. U.S. West Texas Intermediate, WTI, crude futures climbed 49 cents, or 0.5%, to $110.27. OPEC Plus enters a second and final day of meetings on Thursday with sources saying the group is unlikely to decide imminently to pump more barrels to the market beyond August. At its last gathering in early June, OPEC Plus decided to raise output each month by 648,000 barrels per day, BPD, in July and August, compared with a previous plan to add 432,000 barrels of oil per day over three months. OPEC Plus consists of the organization of the petroleum exporting countries and allies such as Russia. Washington welcomed the producer's decision in June that followed months of pressure from the West on OPEC Plus to raise production to help lower oil prices. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Global nuclear power capacity needs to double by mid-century to reach net-zero emissions targets and help ensure energy security as governments try to reduce their reliance on imported fossil fuels, the International Energy Agency, IEA, said on Thursday. Several countries aim to achieve net-zero emissions by mid-century, a target scientists say could give the world a chance of capping temperature rises at 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Amid the current global energy crisis, governments are also looking to reduce reliance on imported fossil fuels to ensure their energy security. The Biden administration's first sale of oil and gas drilling rights on federal land garnered thin industry interest on Wednesday while environmental groups filed two separate lawsuits seeking to invalidate the results. The sales, which will continue on Thursday and cover eight states, were viewed as a test of oil industry demand for federal acreage amid soaring fuel prices and calls from President Joe Biden to increase domestic output. The first day of bidding on 120,000 acres in Wyoming wrapped up with no bids on more than a third of the 105 parcels offered, according to online auction platform EnergyNet. Of the $12.5 million in high bids generated on Wednesday, $8.9 million was for a single 1,480-acre parcel in Converse County. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Copper prices slipped on Thursday and were set for their biggest quarterly percentage drop since March 2020 hit by worries about a potential recession following a series of interest rate hikes and a slowdown in demand due to lockdowns in top consumer China. Three-month copper on the London Metal Exchange was down 0.4% at $8,371.50 a tonne, as of 0437 GMT. The contract has fallen more than 19% so far this quarter. The most traded August copper contract in Shanghai was flat at 63,940 yuan, $9,555.69, a ton by the midday break. Dalian and Singapore iron ore futures fell on Thursday and were on track to post a quarterly loss due to persistent demand worries for the steel-making ingredient in top steel producer China. The most traded iron ore for September delivery on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange dropped as much as 2.7% to 787 yuan a ton, after four straight sessions of gains stretching its quarterly loss to about 11%. On the Singapore exchange, iron ore's front-month July contract was down 1% at $121.55 a ton as of 0341 GMT, and on pace to mark its third consecutive monthly fall. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Malaysian palm oil futures were set on Thursday for their biggest monthly drop since October 2008 
even though prices rose nearly 1% for the day as top producer Indonesia considers raising its biodiesel mandate. The benchmark palm oil contract for September delivery on the Bursa Malaysia Derivatives Exchange rose 43 ringgit, or 0.88%, to 4,946 ringgit, $1,123.07, a ton by the midday break. The contract has fallen 21.5% so far this month amid worries over declining shipments and rising production. Indonesia is considering expanding a mandatory palm oil mix in its biodiesel to 35% from 30%, a government official said, as authorities look for ways to stimulate palm fruit purchases from farmers after a slowdown in exports. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.